the largest overseas drug bust in the world. The counter narcotic prosecutor said they had tracked the transatlantic journey of 11.5 tons of cocaine from a port in Guyana and seized it upon arrival at the port of Antwerp. Criminal from Lang. Now when he done went on the live and said this, how he was the watch up man. You understand? You attack the US fucking embassy because I want to see this cat. Me want to come over if you kill nobody. Hello. <laughs> he went on the internet. You understand? If you try to get a visa 10 fucking times and the US embassy gave a visa 10 times because you can't get a visa critics, go to fucking Europe. Europe nice. This cocaine that's shipping from Guyana in rice. Cocaine shipping from Guyana to Belgium in rice. The Belgian prosecutors got all the information. They know who the cocaine belongs to. They know who is the person who are handling the cocaine. They have the family, an entire family known as the Aquino family, who monitor, collect the cocaine, and do everything. I just come in the and tax is gone sometime. You on the internet telling people that you was the watch out man for the Phantom Squad. I personally know that the Phantom Squad existed because I personally used to be a watch out man for them man. And the US Embassy was there right there watching you. That the estimated street value of the drug load is around 900 million pounds, which is US 1.59 billion dollar. Largest drug boss in the world comes from Guyana. That's roughly 222 billion Guyana dollars. Imagine the cocaine that pass through Guyana and go to Belgium. At the time, $222.8 billion is Guyana. There's the whole country Guyana budget. What about the director of public prosecution? That racial, that racial, racial, racial woman. That politically corrupt woman. Shalimar Hak. Oh, for them. But Guyana government, can we hear James Singh, Minister Ropes and Ben of Security, and Guyana Police Force heads claiming that they don't have any information and they have no knowledge of this cocaine and who it belong to and where it going and where it coming from. But the Belgian prosecutors is telling you who it belong to, who handling it, who clearing it from the ship and everything. Delta 9 family. Welcome back to the flight. And if it's your first time flying with us today, do remember to hit that subscription button so that you can stay connected with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Today we're talking about the land, the land of oil and powder. The land, the land of drug lords and oil barons, allegedly. No, they got real wealth, real money passing through the land of many waters. One of the biggest and fastest growing economies in the world. And Guyanese, wherever we are in the world, we are some of the richest citizens in the world right now. That's our situation and we can't run away from it. It just happens to be that. That's the reality that we live. Yeah. Real money, real wealth is passed through the land of many waters. Now, the speaker said, Belgium, Belgium got the info. They did the bus. Allegedly, they ain't getting involved. This one, this one gone too big. This one gone too big. But every day, we could look around. And we can see all of them little petty boss going on. All them little, 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 little people. Oh, this little long see, this two ounces, this couple pop. Mr. Clifton Hicken, I'm disappointed in you. I don't know what you are becoming today. Like I said, I hold you very, very fucking high. Great respect. But I don't know what's happening to you today. I don't know 
what's going through your head and this whole mix up with you and and Sarabo and Jack Dio and Mr. Hicken, what happening, man? It's one of the people we could depend on, count on for honesty. We could rely on you for fear and just action. What happened now, man? What's happening to you? How are you becoming the, the, the what we are turning into? I can't accept the man. Ah, this high esteem and respect that I have for you. You turn it down, you, you, you're flushing it down the drain. Anyway, I'm strained. But what I'm trying to say, Mr. Clifton Hicken, Mr. Wendell Blanham, Mr. James Singh, and the Minister of Security, Mr. Ropes and Ben. Mr. Ropes and Ben, may you stand up, gaff, you know me, I tell you the history between your father and my father, your father and my father when we met years ago in the mines in Linden, in Kumaka, in Three Friends. Mr. Ben, look my face. Check the name, see Paul. We talk. Validate that we talk. Ask. Ask. Edgel. Because I spoke to Edgel before I came and spoke to you, and I discussed the same thing with Edgel. Anyway, I ain't a strain off. I gotta stay focused. So, this cocaine that's shipping from Guyana in rice. Cocaine shipping from Guyana to Belgium in rice. The Belgian prosecutors got all the information. They know who the cocaine belongs to. They know who is the person who are handling the cocaine. They have the family, an entire family known as the Aquino family, who monitor, collect the cocaine, and do everything for them. But Guyana government, Kanu head James Singh, Minister Ropes and Ben of Security, and Guyana police force heads. Claiming that they don't have any information and they have no knowledge of this cocaine and who it belongs to and where it's going and where it's coming from. But the Belgian prosecutors is telling you who it belongs to, who handling it, who clearing it from the ship and everything. In criminals, drug dealers and criminals, the police in Guyana and the government in Guyana is the criminal. But you still didn't get your ticket? This flight takes off every single day. Tap that subscription button. Thanks. Following a series of investigations, searches and arrests, the Belgian prosecutors dealt a serious blow to the recently disbanded drug gang led by the former chief Willie Michelin as they intercepted and unearthed the largest overseas drug boss in the world. The counter narcotic prosecutors said they had tracked the transatlantic journey of 11.5 tons of cocaine from a port in Guyana and seized it upon arrival at the port of Antwerp on Wednesday, November 4, 2020. The federal prosecutors told the Belgian media that the estimated street value of the drug load is around 900 million pounds which is us 1.59 billion dollar largest drug boss in the world come from guyana that's roughly 222 billion guyana dollars imagine the cocaine that passed through guyana and go to belgium at the time 222.8 billion dollars guyana there's the whole country Guyana budget. There's how much cocaine government officials involved in smuggling from Guyana to Belgium. The entire country budget for a year is with the cocaine equivalent to. Let's continue. In Belgium, three police officers, a port manager, and a lawyer were among some 20 other criminals arrested as a part of the Belgian counter-narcotic operation. The well-structured criminal organization is suspected of orchestrating large and regular, hear the word, regular drug shipments from South America to Belgium. Now let me cut right there. These shipments are sent at least once a month, minimum. 
these drug shipments right now we talking me you talking here watching this video you have cocaine shipments going to belgium and other european countries from guyana every month to this very same value tons of cocaine being shipped right now as we speak hold on the shipment arrived in belgium since the drug gang was unable to intercept it at sea due to the arrest of the drug gang members in Belgium. Now, these people tracking this cocaine, and these people know everybody involved, the Belgium counter narcotic police, tracking this cocaine coming from two from South America. And they know everybody involved in this cocaine processing and handling and everything and who it going and who it belong to. They know everything. They wait until the cocaine ship and they're on seeing the ship floating. And when it near reach the Belgium, let me show the people fuckers, these fuckers smart. They wait till the cocaine near reach the Belgium. And they're going to lock up the members of the family that is handling cocaine. That is go out at sea and take it off the ship. They lock up all the members of the family and the gang. The liar who won bail them out for the go and ship collect it, they lock up the liar too. So no liar therefore bail them out. And then lock up the police chief that is responsible for keeping the police away from where these men got to go and operate and collect this cocaine and transport this cocaine in Belgium. That is what the Belgium counter narcotic prosecutors did. Lock up the head of the family and the whole family in the gang so nobody can go and take the cocaine out of the ship. Lock up the liar so no liar left for bail them. Lock up the police chief who in charge of the police. We're gonna tell the police what to do or what not to do. Lock you up too. And the ship with the 11.5 ton of cocaine just it had it couldn't come off because everybody responsible for taking it off and handling it and transporting or whatever they got locked up the ship just left sailing and go straight to the belgium port that is how the belgium prosecutors went straight to the exact container they went straight to the exact container and said this container right here this you won't come from there now this is it they've got in the tons of cocaine open it when they open the container there's a container of cocaine in the container that container was scanned by government workers at GRA and that information was hid away by senior government officer the lady who ain't gone to jail she's supposed to go and get charged and gone to jail but at the same time the Minister of Security in Guyana claiming they ain't got no information. The head of Kanu, James Singh, claiming they ain't got no information. The former police commissioner, now this police commissioner, them ain't got no information and they can't do no investigation. What about the director of public prosecution? That racial, that racial, racial, racial woman. That politically corrupt woman. Shalimar Hak. Oh, you could sleep at night, Shalimar Hak. You're a Muslim. You call yourself a Muslim. Yeah? What do you do for remiss all these sins? Do you give arms? How often do you give arms, Shalimar Hak? How do you remiss all these atrocities, these sins that you committed? Charging black people in the Cooperative Republic of Guyana with false charges. Yeah? Issuing recommendation for charges and arrest of black people in Guyana. Why Darren Mladen gone to jail for raping and buggering a little girl? Why Why Darmladen get charged 
for abusive language in parliament telling people the one they'll do? How come critics were always cussing people and embarrassing them? Use an, an equipment and a platform, social media platform or a communication device to threaten and embarrass people. How come he ain't get charged yet? A shady marhat? Guyana gone down in history. Biggest I'll find. Biggest drug boss. Big, big. Lana Island powder. Guyana. Right? But look, notice 48 laws of power. Law number five. Reputation is everything. Guard it with your life. The bus gone down and so much more passing out like that. And so much more pass like that already. And because of repetition, suit and tie, stripe and rank, allegedly, nothing ain't coming out of door. Guyana gone down in history. Melly Mel getting a critic again. Now Melly Mel is saying she know directly why critics can't fly to the USA, allegedly. Allegedly, you're hearing is because he was seen on the plane and he got pictures taken with a certain person. Allegedly, because of certain nefarious actions that he was involved in, now he can no longer fly. Allegedly, it's because of a certain young lady leaving his name at the embassy. We're hearing so many things. But Melly Mel come for clarify. And Melly Mel. The news usually got the scoop on critic because, you know, the two of them got their own thing going on. But we can hear directly from Melly Mel and she can tell me why critics can't fly to the USA, allegedly. Not no miss me. Apart from that, before you finally turn president, right? You interview the fucking man. Telling the man how you know for sure, um, you know his words, I personally know, you know we start, I personally know that the fucking Phantom Squad existed, because me, I, critics, was was a watch out man for the Phantom Squad, so critics, you was a fucking murderer, you was a criminal from Lang, now when he done went on the live and said this, how he was the watch up man, you understand? You attack the US fucking embassy because I want to see this cat. Me want to come over if I kill nobody. Hello. <laughs> he went on the internet. You understand? If you try to get a visa 10 fucking times and the US embassy gave visa 10 times, it's because you can't get a, a visa critics. Go to fucking Europe. Europe nice. Why? We don't want you here in the US. You and the Dharam Lal. You and the Dharam Lal, we don't need y'all. We don't need pedophile rapists and abusers ask. here in the fucking US. We don't need y'all here. If Dharam Lal is going to go, you don't just ask so you don't keep me fucking in the mouth. Dharam Lal, Dr. Bogo next talking to you. Dr. Bogo, but because I deny you. <laughs> you understand? When funny life. You understand? Two weeks before he going to the U.S. Embassy, went on his live, talking about he used to be watch out man for the Phantom Squad. Talking about he used to be watch out man for the Phantom Squad. Which means, critics, he is a fucking accessory to murder. You muddy, stupid scunt. Oh, you're, so, oh, you're so fucking ignorant and stupid. Oh, you like attention so much? You and you. How oh, are you like attention so fucking much on this internet? How oh, are you just do any and everything for bail y'all following on this internet? I just come on this internet and talk scunt sometime. You on the internet telling people that you was the watch out man for the Phantom Squad. I personally know that the Phantom Squad existed because I personally used to be a watch out man for them, man. And the US Embassy was there right there watching you. You was an accessory to fucking murder. You contributed to more than 400 young people. 400 young black men being more than fucking Guyana. When you're sending these horse around out there to represent you, must let them know the fucking backstory. What are coming on this, inter on this fucking internet? I represent it because 
I can talk for me. And I can talk about why it's come on this internet and represent. And y'all can tell them why it's come on this internet. I don't come on this internet and do scunt. You understand? Run so that is why you will never get a US visa. You understand? Ali Big Buy, you're running wrong, running wrong, guy, running wrong, guy, and I wait on this and now you're lying me with. He's a fucking criminals. The US get enough criminals, they want no more. Let's have a conversation about these topics in the comment section. Catch you in the next flight. 100% wild crafted CMOS. From nature, by natives. Why pay more? Only recently. Prime Minister Rowley and I were having a conversation when many young people, young, brilliant people, questioned the decision of not having a certain artist perform in the country. 